So it's Maundy Thursday and it's a very strange uh, time this year because we're not allowed to go into our own churches to worship. So what I'm going to reflect with tonight is a painting which I've got a print of in the vicarage. And it's appropriate for Maundy Thursday because it is on the night that Jesus was arrested the day before he was crucified. And it presents a scene of Christ uh, before the high priest. And I'll talk a little bit about the history of the painting, but really in the next five minutes, I want to describe my relationship with it and how it seems to mirror some aspects of my own faith story. It's by a Dutch artist called Gerrit van Honthorst. You may know it because it's in the National Gallery. It's quite famous, but it's also worth thinking about what it's not. And I've got an example here of a another religious painting from 60 years before that. I just happened to have it because my wife is making a puzzle out of it. But it's um, The Supper at Cana by Veronese. And it's spectacular and massive. I mean, if you see it in the Louvre, it's 10 metres by 7 metres. But also just look, not just at the scale of, of size, but the number of figures there are. There are hundreds of people, there are cats, there are dogs, there's all sorts. And there was a school of thought which started rebelling against this kind of religious art, saying, I mean, how did you know all these people were at the party? You know, where was this reference in the Bible? All that kind of stuff. And so some of the art after the end of the Reformation, and now let's look back at the Christ of the High Priest, was rebelling against that. See how intimate this picture is, how few figures there are involved. In a way, there are only two, but actually, if you look closely, there are a few more. And I'm going to start with them just behind the uh, high priest and also to Jesus is right. You may see there's sort of some shady figures. Maybe these are other priests. Maybe these are the disciples. Maybe Peter's one of them. Or maybe they're just bystanders. But for me, a bystander was certainly what I used to be with regard to Christianity. I was... I knew people were Christians, but when I was young, I I wasn't part of my life. No one I knew took it seriously. And so I'd observe Christianity as a phenomenon which happened to other people. But then when I was about a teenager, I started really looking into it. And with that process of looking into it, I related quite a lot to the high priest. And in fact, there was a book, uh, this painting was the cover of a book by Robin Lane Fox called The Unauthorised Version, which uh, I found quite inspiring. Uh, Lane Fox, as it happens, is an atheist and I drew different conclusions. But there is a sense of honest inquiry. And although the high priest in some ways in the gospel is a villain, I don't think he's painted as a villain here. He's sincerely inquiring, it seems to me. There's a sympathy in the way his face is drawn. His, his brow is very furrowed. There's age, there's experience. And he wants to prove this point. And he's got the scriptures out to make that point, proving that Jesus cannot be the Messiah. It's a little bit aggressive, but I don't think unsympathetic. And certainly I was like that. I really interrogated the Christian story. I wanted to know, how can this be the case? How can that be the case? But eventually I... I changed. I started to think this is the case. And then there was a moment of commitment when I was called to be a priest, when really I realised that my role in this story had changed. And I was no longer the person interrogating from the outside. I was now starting to have to answer the questions. So in a sense, I moved across. And now I want to look at the last figure here, who is Christ himself. His wrists are bound because he has been arrested and he's looking back at his interrogator. Not with anger, though, interestingly, not even with frustration, but with some patience and maybe love. He accepts this fate. He knows it's got to happen. It's actually quite a peaceful, reverent scene, believe it or not. Even though his life's on the line, And he will be dead in a matter of hours from this moment. And so sometimes in my life now, I am relating with Christ, facing the questions. But I suppose I've never lost my sense of questioning either. So I swing between these two figures. Christ answering the questions and the high priest asking the questions. 
And yet I think there is something also prayerful about this painting. The former director of the National Gallery was asked once about prayer. It was said that in the Louvre, which is in France, a Catholic country, people would often pray before the religious paintings and the, uh, uh, the wardens of the gallery would have to move them on. And someone asked Neil McGregor, what do you do if someone prays before one of your paintings? And he said, oh, oh, we, we encourage it. And perhaps this night we can contemplate this work of art and it may help our prayer and to get cl closer to Christ facing the Inquisition, but ready to meet whatever would happen to him.